Just the thought of what lie ahead for me was almost too much to bear. I knew this day would come. I had tried to prepare for it, but one can only prepare so much. Make sure to be well rested, I was informed. But how can one sleep knowing, or I should say, not knowing, what was in store for them? After much tossing and turning for what seemed to be hours, I was finally able to get some sleep. When dawn finally arrived, I awoke with dread at facing the day. I ate what I could keep down and went on my way. After arriving and entering my station, I tried to stay focused on what I was required to do. As I made my rounds, making sure we were well stocked, I could feel my hands begin to tremble and a nervous chill swept across my flesh. I swallowed hard as I attempted to push away a fear that was slowly working its way over my nerves. I rubbed my sweaty palms on the front of my pants and took a few deep breaths trying to remain calm. I passed by one in my group who was busy making sure their area was ready. They stopped to look my way long enough for us to give each other knowing nods before we went about our own business of preparing. I made my way back and swallowed again, a lump starting to form in the back of my throat. I looked around wide-eyed and faked a small smile in hopes to ease the worried lines between my brows. Those who were in charge were moving across the floor very quickly, scribbling things down on their notepads they carried and mumbling to themselves. Every once in a while, one would stop by my station to ask me questions. Satisfied with my answers, they would move along. I could sense a mild panic in their lightly raised voices. From where I stood at my station, I could see outside. I watched as the sky that had known darkness only hours before began to show the first faint signs of light. I ran a shaky hand through my hair and began to pace the floor. Fear arose in me as time ticked on. Back and forth I walked, taking slow, deep breaths. I glanced up at the sounds of yelling and fast talking as something was forgotten and had to quickly be remedied before it was too late. Panic began at the base of my spine and slowly worked its way up to my shoulders, causing discomfort. I rolled each of them, then my head, hearing a few pops of the joints while I tried to relieve the pressure of built-up tension. I took a few more deep breaths, filling the air fill my lungs, releasing it slowly through my dry, parched lips. I picked up my water bottle with shaking fingers under the cap and took a few slow sips. As the cool water flowed down my throat, I thought back to a time before this a time back before I had to worry about such a day. My thoughts were brought back to the present when I heard a loud crash. I jumped, spilling my water down the front of my shirt, and I spun around quickly. I couldn't make out what had made the noise, but all the yelling that followed told me it was not that far from where I stood. I swallowed it again, running my trembling hand over the front of my shirt. The coolness of the water that penetrated the fabric felt good against the heat of my flushed skin. I began having a sickening, queasing, nauseous feeling in my cheeks as panicking thoughts ran through my head. How much longer till all hell breaks loose? I can't do this, I thought. I can't go through with this. I, I've got to get out of here. I need to leave. Now! No, no, I argued with myself. I, I promised to be here and, and, and to help. In fact, I had no other choice. I was told that I had to be here, that it was my job to help out. I, I only have to hang in there, be strong, I try to convince myself. I could do this, I can, and I, I must. 
no matter what happens. But how can I? How can I stay when every cell in my body was screaming out the same word? Run! Leave! Leave now! And just go! What's the worst that can happen? As my feet refused to leave my area, I knew the answer to that. I knew I had no choice but to stay and face the unknown. Besides, I thought, looking around me, it's not like I would be alone in this. I'd be surrounded by those more experienced than I. Those who have fought the good fight and survived. I coughed, running my fingers through my hair once again, feeling a light perspiration forming at my temples. It was at this moment that I glanced outside and gasped. Sheer panic took over and I froze in my spot, unable to move, barely able to breathe. No, no, is it happening already? Is this when my life as I know it ends? I stood ready, barely prepared, as my breath became more rapid, in and out in short, quick spurts, feeling lightheaded my thoughts swirled and tangled in my mind. The buzz around me was slowly drowned out by the ascended pounding of my own heart in my ears. I subconsciously ran my hands together. They felt cold and clammy, and my chest felt hot and tight. As if in slow motion, I watched outside while they approached. These beings, whose eyes were focused intently on their own mission, made their way closer and closer. I swallowed back the cereal I had forced down my throat for breakfast just hours ago as I fought back tears. I, I didn't want anyone around me to think I was weak, but the truth was, I was scared to death. Although I was shaky with trepidation, I readied myself as more and more arrived. I glanced around me and noticed I wasn't the only one who looked like they would rather be somewhere else. And yet, seemed to be those who appeared to be confident. Either they truly were, or they hide their own inadequacies very well. My thoughts were interrupted with shrieks, yelling, and earth-shaking pounding of feet. I turned my head just in time to witness what appeared to be a stampede of mindless bodies trampling over each other to win some crazed unknown race. I pleaded with my body to move, to do something, anything. But frozen in place, I was held as if by some unknown force. I remained at my assigned station. This is it, I thought. This is my day of reckoning. I stayed steadfast as my thoughts returned to just the night before. I had enjoyed what was possibly my last meal, surrounded by my family and friends. Would I ever see them again, I questioned myself. The day was nothing short of pure terror. Hour after long agonizing hour passed as I did what I had to do to survive. Never before had I seen such intense frenzy. Although I had heard the horror stories, nothing could have prepared me for this. As the day of total and complete chaos for me came to an end, I returned home exhausted, but thankful that it was over, at least for now. And I hung up my apron with a shiny badge with my name on it and flung myself onto the bed and stared up at the ceiling. I was finally able to release a long sigh of relief. I was ever so grateful that Black Friday came around only once 
a year.